and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite data structures, which is Default Dict, uh, which is also extremely helpful in interviews. So I find I reach for this this class quite a lot. Uh, and so I'm going to give you a, a very silly example of using it, as well as some other related stuff uh, if you're not allowed to use Default Dict, which occasionally happens. Uh, so let's jump into that. Okay. So the concept behind a default dict is it is a mapping type in Python uh, where if you try and access keys that don't exist, it will provide a default value based on a value factory. Um, and so let me, let me kind of show you an example of that really quickly. Uh, and in order to use this class, you have to import it from collections. So import collections, and we're going to be using you know, dct equals collections dot default dict. The first argument here is a function or callable that uh, produces the default value. So in our case, let's just use int. Uh, now int is a type, uh, but it is also a thing that you can call to produce an integer. Um, you know, if you call int, you get back the number zero. And in this particular particular dictionary, if we try and access some number, so if we say like dict a, you'll see that we get zero back, even though I never inserted this key into that dictionary. Um, and this can be pretty convenient because you can basically modify values in this dictionary without ever really worrying whether they exist or not. Um, so you can just, you know, without even you know, checking whether B is in the dictionary, you can just say dictionary of B plus equals two, and you know, it will have set that value for you. Um, also, just by accessing this value here, it causes that value to be creation, created. Uh, and this behavior might be familiar if you come from some other programming languages, like I believe uh, C++ maps are default initialized if you use the uh, bracketed lookup. Uh, and I believe there's probably some other languages that do a similar thing. Um, and you can do more complicated things in these initializers. So instead of just saying like int, you can do, you know, collections.defaultDict. Uh, let's say for whatever reason we wanted to initialize them to negative one or something like that, or maybe I don't know a list containing uh, a list containing I don't know a dictionary uh, list containing a dictionary. So now if you do dict two a, you can see we get back this, and like maybe we could do dot append you know, another dictionary into this. I don't know. Uh, but basically, you can customize this by sending whatever callable you want into there. And it will, you know, pre-populate whatever missing values with this value here. I usually find that the most useful ones are default dict int, set, and list. Uh, like, if you want some mapping for, for those. Um, and I'll actually show you, I'll show you an example where we solve a very, very silly problem using default dict. Uh, the other thing to note here is the rest of the parameters to default dict act just like dict. Uh, so if you need to give it initial values, you can do that by doing, you know, collections.defaultDict int, um, you know, a, two, b, three, and those values, uh, those values will be seeded in there. So you can see dict three a is, is initialized to two. Um, now, if you're using default dict int, you might also want to look at counter. I won't go over counter in this video, but maybe another video. Okay, let's jump into the silly problem that we want to that we want to solve today. Um, <laughs> I just googled default dict interview questions because um, I couldn't think of one myself. So this is one very 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 simple interview question. Like you should be able to hopefully be able to solve this one. Um, but in this one, they gave a mapping of cities by country. So it's mapping a city name to a country name. Obviously, this isn't you know a great mapping because these are missing states and. You know, there's some ambiguity here, like, is CA California or is that Canada, Canada? Um, but, but anyway, so the, the problem here is I want to turn this mapping into a new mapping that maps from country to a sorted list of cities. And so I'm going to show you how I would implement this if I didn't have default dict and I didn't have another thing I'm going to show you in a sec. Um, and this is probably how I would approach this in other programming languages as well. I would probably build a dictionary and then I would loop through the keys and values inside this mapping up here. So for kv in cities by country dot items. And then I would check if this value, so the value here is the country. We can actually city country to get these better variable names. 
I would first check whether country is contained in dictionaries. You could say if country in DCT, uh, then we can do DCT country dot append city. Uh, otherwise, we need to initialize this value, DCT country equals city. And this kind of gives us a little bit, our code's a little bit more complicated here than I would want it to be because, you know, here, here we have to, you know, we, we're essentially writing the same code twice. Um, now, this doesn't quite solve our problem yet. We haven't sorted all of the cities yet, so we have to do one last thing. Uh, for uh, cities list in dct dot values cities list dot sort okay so this this should implement that uh, pprint dot pprint dct and you'll see that we have sorted these so we got you know Toronto Vancouver Paris London Detroit San Mateo Seattle cool. Uh, so this implements the problem, but uh, this kind of demonstrates not really knowing these nice things about Python all that well. And so I'll show you two other ways that we could solve this better. Uh, the first is going to be with default dict, um, which actually I think is the best way. So I won't I won't save the best for last. We'll do the best first. Uh, the first is with default dict, uh, and then again we'll import collections, we'll make DCT now, instead of just a normal dictionary, we'll make it a collections.default dict. And in this case, we're going to make the value factory list. So it will build a list if the key is missing. And so the cool thing about this entire, you know, default dict thing here is we can mostly remove a lot of our code here. Uh, and so now this actually solves the problem the same as we had before. So this you know, DCT country, this will create the list if it doesn't exist, uh, and then append the city to it. And you'll see if we run this now, <laughs> we get a little bit of different indented here because the, the actual type changes slightly, uh, but you can see still we get, you know, the, the proper list that we want here. Um, but occasionally interviewers will be a little bit prickly and tell you that you can't use default ticked, which I would argue that's the wrong way to be an interviewer, but that's just me. Um, and so we can actually use a clever um, a clever method on the dictionary, the dict built-in class itself to implement our own default dict. And so what we can do is dct.setDefault, and setDefault takes a key and a value, and if that key is missing, it will set the value, otherwise it will do nothing. Uh, so we're gonna set default country and empty list, and the other nice thing about set default is it will re-return this value. So if you want to chain uh, dot append after it, you can do that as well. So this will also solve the problem instead of using default dict. Um, I find that set default, you know, is occasionally useful, but most of the times I will use a default dict instead. Um, but anyway, hopefully I showed you, you know. <laughs> Uh, the, the power of default dict, but also a couple other ways that you might solve this particular problem, and maybe you can take this and apply it to other problems as well. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.